you guys started off as like, hey, any opportunity is a good opportunity. Meet yeah. is meet, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But now you have the op- option to choose. Again, yeah. a very privileged position, but definitely something that you guys earned, yeah. right? And now, how do you guys choose properly? Yeah. And that direction comes from the top. Yeah. And I think that's where I think a lot of entrepreneurs can resonate as well, is that it's not easy to learn these skills, to like really set boundaries for the first time, to say no to opportunities that you would have said yes to a year ago. Correct. Right? Yeah. Um, and, you know, you shoot yourself, you know, what if it doesn't come back, right? Like yeah. there's a lot of those things where, you know, uncertainty will settle in. 100%. But like you said, you know, be very clear on where you want to go. Yeah. Your vision will drive you to the right place. All right. Welcome to the Level Up Podcast. Today, we have a really exciting guest with us today. Uh, we have Waiting. Waiting is a good friend of mine and a creative. Uh, he is the founder of uh, Lucid Experiences. And yeah. we've had such amazing time looking over through his work, uh, going to exhibits that Lucid uh, runs uh, and just really makes something come to life. Like he really brings out what immersive really means and Mm -hmm. completely transformed my imagination of what like an event could be and what an actual experience could be where I go in and I actually feel immersed with the work. I feel immersed with the, what the artist is trying to convey. Yeah. And of course, uh, I won't uh, take away your, you know, triumphant uh, introduction of yourself. Uh, (laughs) I'll leave that to you. Uh, So we think, could you please like tell the audience a bit about who you are, uh, where you're from and, Perhaps what leveling up means to you. Okay, so uh, again, my name is Wei Ting, mm-hmm. and in Chinese it's Wei Ting, but mm-hmm. I guess everybody calls me Wei Ting. Um, yeah, and I'm the founder and CEO of Lucid Experiences, like you mentioned. And what we do is like we try to create environments where it takes you to a different time, a different place, where you know it's almost as if you're walking through a movie and experiencing it, you know, in the third person yourself. Uh, that to me is what immersive means. And we hope to do like really uh, meaningful storytelling, right? So, so at the end of it, you actually feel different from who you were when you stepped in. Mm-hmm. And I really like really uh, resonate with that because I love that feeling of completely like changing someone's perspective and yeah. their worldview yeah. just from giving them like a new experience, right? Yeah. And for you, like, how do you usually change that perspective? Like, what do you do? Like, what are the different things you play with to make someone change their mind on something? I mean, like, it could be down to, like, a physical set, right? Like, um, you know, at the LQI experience, there's this place where you, it's uh, a bit intimidating, a bit uncomfortable. It shows, like, um, like um, a set where there's explosion, there's fire, and, and there's debris falling down from the sky. But when you change a position, it actually forms a word, right? And the word is uh, guang, which is light. And it's light mm, at the end of the tunnel. Mm. So even from like a physical set, you can show that in different perspectives, you really see different things. It's the same thing, but you're mm-hmm. just seeing something different. Yeah. And I think that's what I really, really enjoyed about seeing your work. And, you know, I think there's so many parallels in the line of creativity, right? Uh, but I think ultimately what everyone's trying to do is trying to show the world how they see the world yeah and that's so beautiful i don't know like uh, that as a concept to me is like if everyone could see the world the way you see it mm-hmm. right or vice versa if you could see the world the way everyone else sees it yeah yeah that could be so interesting for like world peace and you know, yeah anything no even like we're just playing with our dogs right like um you know how different animals they perceive like different light spectrums mm-hmm. like i often wonder like what the world looks like to them right right, right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah do you have an answer I don't know because you can never <laughs> see from their perspective, right? Yeah. But like, um, so it's impossible. But as much as we can for for humans, like we can try to see from each other's perspectives as well. Yeah, yeah. that's actually a really interesting point too. Where like I just had a conversation with some of our housemates, like yeah. about the whole concept of empathy, mm. right? And if true empathy really exists, yeah. And if it does, what is that you know context? Because no matter how hard we try to yeah. understand someone, yeah. we're simply still seeing it's our own feelings, you know, yeah. interposed onto their yeah. life. Yeah. Uh, we say we're walking them out in their shoes, but what Correct. we're doing is we're putting ourselves right into, into their, their shoes, shoes, right? And it's not necessarily a true, true empathy. Like, empathy. But the question also becomes like, why is there a need for true empathy? Like, it's not putting yourself in someone else's shoes and walking them out. Like, is that not good enough? I feel mm-hmm. like even that is not easy, right? So, so right. Yeah. yeah. So, so why uh, is there a need to aim for like what is true empathy? Like, um, does it even exist? Like, I feel like the true absolute of a lot of things don't exist. 
Hundred yeah. percent. And actually, what I recently came to、uh, to an answer to this is that actually, true empathy is just like you said, the attempt、yeah. to really show someone that you care、yeah. about their perspective and、yeah. that their perspective is valid. Yeah, that's all you need, right?、Yeah. If you think about the last time you felt heard by someone and felt understood, did they really understand you? Probably not, right?、Yeah. But what you did was you felt heard.、Yeah. You felt like they cared about you enough to ask you questions and to listen. Yeah, without forcing their own belief system down your throat. Yeah, right. Yeah. And I think that is really what the crux is. Like, you don't need to necessarily truly know someone else's feelings. Just、yeah. because you have understood that pain might equip you more, right, to be receptive to their pain and to listen. But that's not the only thing that's going to make you empathetic.、Yeah. What's really going to make you empathetic is just sitting down and listening to them. Really doing active listening, active, you know,、um, I guess making the other person feel like they really are heard and understood and cared for. Yeah, I don't know if this sounds geeky,、uh, but like,、um, I mean, Game of Thrones is super popular now, so I don't think it is right,、mm-hmm. uh, especially after the TV shows.、Uh, but、uh, when I first read the books, I was like mind blown by it, right? Because it's a fantasy world, but like, unlike the old genre of fantasy where there's always a good and an evil, like Star Wars has it, you know,、um, mm. Lord of the Rings has it,、right? yeah. But like,、um, there's always a hero that's going through his hero's journey. Yeah, it's an absolute evil that you need to vanquish. Right, life doesn't work like that.、Never. And I think, like,、um, you know, sort of,、uh, Ice and Fire actually captured a lot of that human motivations really well. Right, good people can do bad things. Yeah, bad people can do good things as well. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. and that was why I fell in love with the series. Yeah, because、wow. it's so much like real life, right? Hundred percent. Yeah. And- Actually, that's one of my favorite like types of media nowadays, where、mm. it's like there's no clear hero. Yeah, you hate everybody, <laughs> right? <laughs> But you gotta understand like why they had to do the things they did. Like it's not,、Absolutely. it's human. It's、yeah. human to err, and it's human to not always know what the right thing is to do. And hell, is there even a right thing? Right? Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. all a different perspective. Correct. And I think that's also something that I'm exploring a lot nowadays with the Better Life Framework, right?、Yeah. Where you know, as you keep you know maturing, as you keep thinking about thinking, you realize that. Just like one way of seeing the world is not enough. Just、mm. one way of seeing it from your limited, you know, perspective or your limited worldview, you know, your culture, your background is it's just so impossible to just use that as the only way to recognize that this is how people live. So I think with that, you know, in mind, like I'm very curious, how do you like what what do you see as the concept of leveling up? I think we talked about that, right?、Yeah. Uh, but. How are you applying the concept of leveling up in your life, whether it be at work or whether it be at home? How do you think about that?、Uh, do I talk about this now or later? You can talk about anything. Yeah. yeah. So when you ask me like、uh, to draw something for for what it means for me to level up, yeah, I think that、um, so recently I just started.、Uh, I, I downloaded、uh, Baldur's Gate three.、Right? Okay, it's like game of the year last year, but、wow. struggling to find time to play it,、mm-hmm. and. It's like at the side of your character is this icon, right?、Mm. So when it's time to level up, there's a little arrow up. Wow! So you click it, and you can choose to to gain more points and and, and hit points and skills and, and feats、mm. and all that, right? But I really love like RPG video games.、Um, mm-hmm. It's not so much、yeah. like like in in the last ten years because of work, you don't have that much time to play anymore. I understand.、Right? Um, like not since Skyrim that that I play. RPG feature game, I think. Wow, yeah, been、uh, a while. It's been a while. Yes,、yeah. Skyrim's、yeah. been out for like I don't know, like decade. Yeah, yeah. So,、um, but it, I love the storytelling of these things, which is very related to the work that I do, right?、Um, and, yeah. But it's also true to adventure that you level up. Like it's never you never sit at home and you level up. Hmm. I love that. Right.、Yeah. You go out, you do things. Like, yeah. You, you win battles, you lose battles,、mm-hmm. and, and you make decisions and. Sometimes the the bad decisions can actually lead to good outcomes. Yeah, right, which is kind of funny. And <laughs> the sometimes making good decisions can also result in outcomes that are not perfect either. Sure, right. And it goes back to the whole thing of like,、um, you know, sometimes the choices don't don't matter as much.、Mm. But like, as long as you keep going forward, that's when you level up. I think. Wow! Wow! Yeah, that's super meaningful. I love that. Yeah, and you know, I, I think. You put it actually very concise. I don't have anything else to add. It was just like, hey, you know, to level up, you need to go through this journey, this adventure、mm-hmm. that you're on.、Um, you can choose your adventure, certainly,、exactly. right?、Yeah. You can choose which path to go. There's、yeah. an easy path. There's a hard path, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. There's probably an in between path, sure. Yeah.、Uh, but ultimately, then leveling up comes after you know throughout the journey and、Correct. at the end. Yeah. Yeah. So like, 
I mean, like imagine if you started this journey as a level 100 and, and you just ease into everything. <laughs> it wouldn't be fun either. Yeah, yeah. I think part of the fun of playing these games is the learning new things as you go, making choices as you go, right? Mm-hmm. And you start off with like a lot of like unknown unknowns. Yeah. Right. And by the end of it, like uh, you at least you know what you don't know. And, and that's part of the fun. And yeah. you, sh- you start shaping a character. And, and life is sometimes kind of like that, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And even going with that game analogy, like I love games that don't show you the whole skill tree yeah. until you actually get to like the next exactly. stage. And that makes so much sense to me. Like yeah. you don't know what the end stage of yeah. a skill is yeah, until yeah, you yeah, actually yeah. get better at the skill. <laughs> It's the same thing in our work as well, right? There's a lot of skills that you don't even know you need until you're like there and you're like, huh, this is like something that's missing. 100%, right? yeah. yeah. It's just like a video game sometimes. Is there like any skill that you think has been, like you said, like you're like, hey, I had no idea this was important to me. I had no idea I needed this. And you're like, ah, oh, shit, no, I need to build this out right now. Um, you're talking about video games or real life? <laughs> <laughs> real life, I guess. Like, I mean, it could be both. But <laughs> yeah, I think it's it's something I said, said a lot in um startups, right? Uh, that like first time founders think think about a product, second time thinks about the distribution, mm. right? And, oh, wow. And now, like, even when we do things like um the the artist in you or, or the the OCD personality will make you want to work on a product a lot more. But yeah. You kind of have to force yourself to take a step back and think about distribution first. Like, how can I like mm. have, you know, 10,000 users before if I even launch or like on day one of launches, 10,000. Right. Right. So that's something that I didn't know when, mm. when I first started. And then you start launching a few different things and you're like, home. Oh, like I just spoken to a few other people other than just working on the product. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. So uh, basically you're saying like at the beginning, maybe for, as a creative, it's really easy for us to think about, hey, I just want to build a thing, right? Yeah. It's very exciting. Yeah. Right? I want to build a thing. Yeah. But then you'd realize that you have no one to sell it to. Yeah. Right? And yeah. then so now it's like pushing yourself to go, hey, I need to also make sure that there's someone to buy yeah. by the time that this thing is ready. Yeah. Uh, and of course, especially so when you have a team to feed and everything. So actually, you just brought up a word that I found. Um, it's something I've been thinking about for years, right now. But like one afternoon, I sat down and there's a few words that we throw around quite a bit when we refer to each other in the in the work that we do, right? Someone mm-hmm. could call you a creative. Someone could call you a, a designer. Sure. Someone could call you an artist, right? Mm-hmm. So which one do you think you are? If I would to put this question to you, these three words. Oh, for me, really? yeah, yeah. Okay, um, I think I resonate with creator. I yeah, like creator, right? creating things. Yeah. yeah, and then like founder, like founding things. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's the same for me too. That's my answer too, because I realized that um, th- there is a difference in these few words: being a creator uh, versus a designer and an artist. Like, mm-hmm. uh, for me, artists sometimes can be. I'm gonna offend people here. But, <laughs> it's all good. The safe yeah. space. Um, like um, it can be a bit egocentric. It's mm. your view, your your you know thing that you want to put out to the world, right? Uh, and a creator sometimes can be guilty of that as well. Like we're so um entrenched that we have to make something. Mm. We stop mm. thinking like, who are we doing it for? Right, and. Usually the answer is ourselves, right? Correct. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> For better or worse, it yeah. is, right? If you hit the right thing, then a lot of people will be using it. But if you yeah. don't, it ends up becoming something that only Conrad has at home, right? Yeah, it's yeah. a colossal waste. Yeah. yeah. So, but I like to think, uh, I like to encourage like myself and the team to think like a designer nowadays. Because mm. there's usually an outcome that you have to work backwards from. Okay. And not just an outcome, but like a group of people specifically, you have to do it for. Yes, yes. Yeah. There's a reason behind the company existing. Like you guys have all banded together to build something for right. a consumer, yeah. for a customer. Yeah. Mm. So the thing that we were talking a lot about at the start of the year was like, um, like you know how this Simon Sinek thing about starting with why. Yeah. 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 So I think a good evolution of that is actually starting with like who. Okay. Yeah. Starting with who first, and mm-hmm. and then. Actually, I, I googled this. Like, I'm not the first one to think about it for sure. Right? sure. A lot of people have, right? Mm-hmm. Actually, it's good to start with why, so you know the purpose and intent of why you're doing something. But mm. starting with who, that makes you think a lot more about like who who are the end users of that and why is it that 
it's a problem for them. Right, right. Yeah. I see. And so I'm curious, like, you know, when you start with who, then typically some people can only imagine their close proximity, right? Oh, I'm going to build this for, if not myself, then maybe my mom, right? Okay. My dad, my, yeah. my siblings, my kids. Um, how does that factor into this model? Because I think not many people can actually see the end customer. That's also true. Um, but at the same time, I think like uh, it's like going back to the video game analogy, right? The more mm-hmm. you go through it, then you're like, oh, this is not a problem. This is not a set of people. Maybe you bump to a village and they give you a side quest or something. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah. Okay. So I think it's really about like going through the motions of it. And, and that's what gives you the momentum and confidence to know that mm-hmm. like, oh, I, I've met this other group of people and this is a problem that I can fix. Yeah. But then there's the whole thing about like, you know, how do you differentiate the side quest from the main quest? Main quest yeah. <laughs> how do you know that this is like a worthwhile quest to do, but it's in the end still not the main thing to do? Yeah. Uh, that's a whole different problem too. It is, right? It's judgment and and uh, it's also relative, right? So no one person can make a judgment for other people. You can only make the best judgment for which is a worthy main quest for yourself. Right, because like what looks like a side quest to you could be a main quest for someone else. Hundred percent, right. and it happens all the time. Yeah, right? I mean, yeah. I think that's a very modern adaptation of one man's trash is another man's treasure. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> one man's side quest okay. is another okay. man's uh, main quest, quest. <laughs> <laughs> which I think is fantastic. And someone needs to put on a shirt like right now, <laughs> <laughs> all in a cup. Yeah, or in a cup. Yeah, <laughs> but like, I think that's where it gets really interesting because you know, I think. For us, it might be easy to say like, hey, you'll know when you know. Uh, and that's the whole thing, like you said earlier, like of figuring out what are the known knowns, known unknowns, and et yeah, cetera. And yeah. for people who aren't aware at home, like basically there's a matrix that usually can go about four when you're trying to, yeah. yeah, four quadrants. We can figure about when you're trying to process, you know, uh, the next step is mm. kind of where I use it. You know, yeah. hey, uh, what are the things I know about, right? That are the known knowns, right? I know that these exist and I know that these things need to be uh, managed. Then the next one is, what are my known unknowns? Yeah. I know there's something missing there. I just don't know what it is yet, mm. right? And then there's the unknown unknowns, right? Which is, uh, you know, I don't know what I'm missing and I won't see it until it gets there and, you know, too bad, right? Yeah, yeah. And then uh, there's the uh, unknown knowns, which yeah. is like, um, I don't know it, but someone else knows the answer yeah, and, yeah. you know, they can help me out with that. So I think like what's interesting here is that I don't necessarily think that it just has to only be a you know, you'll figure out when you get there. I think that's really part of the level up process. Yeah. But what I found is that like, if you surround yourself with people that are going along similar journeys, right? One is that, hey, if they already have figured out the unknown knowns, right? Mm-hmm. Then they can pass it to you. Yeah. But also at the same time, when they're doing things, they can pass on their um, known unknowns and et cetera. Yeah. And then yeah, at least you guys know roughly like, hey, there's this like, you know, dark spot we have to go towards and yeah. we can find something there. Yeah. Yeah. I think I'm genuinely like curious about a lot of things. Mm-hmm. Like someone can be running a food business or a software business. I like, uh, I'm just curious, like how it works. Like like what's hours like? Mm-hmm. Who are your customers? And for me, like from a long time ago, that has been it. And and like uh, it's always about like talking to different people, what they're doing, and 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 like learning from that. I know I'm not always going to, like I might not want to start like a food company but right. there's interesting insights from that that could apply to, mm-hmm. to what i do as well yeah. well it could be that absolutely there's no relationship right uh, right there's no correlation at all but it's so interesting to find out what different people are working on so that mm-hmm. has been my outlook like i don't think that i'm super intentional when i'm talking to people about like uh yeah like um you know why do you design a business to be that way mm. i feel like i'm almost like um like a dog chasing a car. I do because <laughs> instinctively, I'm just curious, like, why are you doing this? And, mm. and like, how does it work? Well, I think that's wonderful, right? And I think that is what makes you special, right? <laughs> I think your quality as an entrepreneur, right? Everyone has that superpower, right? Yeah. And I think yours 100% is yeah. the ability to like continuously investigate, poke your nose into things. Yeah. And essentially whatever comes out ends up being solidified into what you do. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, but, you know, like, it's it's interesting, right? Like, from that F and B perspective, mm-hmm. like uh, talking to different people, you realize that they all have really different challenges. And to the outside world, everyone thinks that oh, that brand's doing so well; it's so packed. But sure. it's not always true. It's never true. Like it's any business true, you think yeah. is like super successful, yeah. behind the door, <laughs> there's fires everywhere. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I remember like when we did the first like um, 
first like pop up volume of her Ota and friends. Mm. Like one of the ground um stuff, uh, like he overheard like an old lady saying like whoever is the boss of this place, he must be making so much money. <laughs> oh my laughing. gosh. <laughs> yeah, I was having such a horrible day. Like everything yeah. is going wrong. Like right. we're trying to balance the numbers because mm-hmm. like, it's actually really expensive to build one. Sure. Right? Uh, <laughs> I was trying to balance the numbers. I was laughing to myself when, I, when she told me that. And there's a lot of businesses where you look at it and it's like, it's packed, right? But like, mm-hmm. you don't see it when it's empty, when there's downtime, mm-hmm. right? You don't see it when like food cost is going up. Yeah. Right? So, and... That is also related to to a lot of other businesses as well, right? Like, how do you mitigate the downtime and utilize, mm. like... Because if you're paying rent for a space, right? Like, yeah. Uh, like, like how you're paying rent for, for, for somewhere you're living in as well. It doesn't matter if you're not using it for, like, the few hours, like, between lunch and dinner where you don't have a crowd. No. The landlord's going to take the rent from you no matter Correct. what. Correct. Right? So, I think in, in this kind of... Uh, um business model like it gets me thinking like how do you monetize it in different ways like even throughout the down times mm, right i understand and there's also another like connecting dots again right like um mm-hmm. you can say that in a traditional business you have a landlord be it a co-living co-working space sure. or what or so a lot of people say that like no i just want to do online business so i don't have a landlord to pay rent to. Mm-hmm. but that's not true either yeah i realized that the new uh landlords of the digital world if you're doing a B2C, of course, right? Sure. It's just Meta and okay. Google, right? Yeah. They, they, they sell ads. They sell yeah. ads. They yeah. literally control how many people walk through your store. Yeah. Right? So you're just paying a different landlord. Yes. Right? So yeah, it's just like talking to different people doing different businesses and, and somehow mm-hmm. later on it connects. I love it. I love it. Yeah. I mean, that's something I also re- very much recommend to so many people where it's like, hey, if you have the opportunity definitely learn as much as you can, right? One way is like I mentioned, like, you know, how do you shadow someone or be friends with people that are doing similar things? And I think that level of camaraderie and, you know, group uh, kind of discovery will help. But also like just going and exploring and seeing what other people are doing, right? If you're going into like a store and then you see that they run a cool business, ask them questions. I do that all the time too, right? I love going in and just asking them. And you know what? They're actually happy to answer because they... I don't have anyone else to talk yeah, about. Talk <laughs> no, nobody actually asks. Yeah, don't ask that. And yeah. people make stupid assumptions, assumptions. Like you must be making so much money. money. And they're yeah. like, no, I, I would love to tell people my story. You know, yeah, it's not as yeah. glamorous as it thinks, yeah. as you think. And, you know, it's definitely a lot of hard work. But the thing is, you know, that's the journey. That's leveling up, yeah. right? That's going there and, you know, doing your preemptive investigations, right? Into yeah. all these different things. Even though you're, might be like a knight right now. I'm, I'm going to really lean hard into the game analogies yeah, in this episode since <laughs> we're both very close <laughs> on that. But like, you know, if you're like a knight, it yeah. doesn't mean you can't investigate what the mage, you Correct. know, uh, exactly. is holding, right? Yeah. Their staff. And ultimately knowing how to deal with them will might help you in a future battle, right? Yeah, Who yeah. knows, right? Yeah, More absolutely. either in competition or in cooperation, absolutely. whatever it might be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I think like, that's really a secret sauce, I think, of what you do. Um, I think it's definitely um, your superpower. <laughs> I'm going to say that again and again. Yeah. And so this episode is proudly supported by the Coast 3 Family Toolbox and specifically the Gamify Your Life template. So Gamify Your Life it came from a time when like, I was really, really into video games. And everybody around me just told me that, hey, you will never succeed if you play video games this much, yeah, right? Probably. It's just never going to you know, make your life into success because yeah. you're spending your time booking these things yeah. and you're not going to gain anything out of that. But you know, the thing is, what I realized was myself and all my friends, we were great at playing the video game because we <laughs> did so much research, yeah. right? We would go and research the hell of anything. We go yeah. on every wiki, right? Yeah. And find out anything you could know about that specific mechanic of that boss fight so that yeah. you can actually fight and win the, yeah. the boss. It's research right? without you knowing. Right, it's research, right? Yeah. On top of that, we grind every single day. We yeah. grind so yeah. much, right? Yeah. Hours and hours and hours just to perfect our you know, skills to really Correct. do that mechanic, dodge that boss you know, attack. Yeah. And we, we learned also like how to make money, right? Merchanting yeah. in the game. We learned yeah. how to buy, yeah. um, buy low, sell high, right? Digital goods. Right? Digital goods, yeah, right? Like the day, there yeah. are so many things we learned from playing video games yeah. that are now so applicable when we run our creative endeavors. Yeah. And I think that is what made me really want to create this Gamify Your Life template because I realized that, hey, how I was successful was because when I started my first business, I started applying everything I knew about playing video games into that. I just realized that it's just all resources management, right? Yeah, resource I, management. Everything exactly. is just a game, yeah. right? Uh, we're all going on this quest. If, can, if I can 
make everyone go on this quest together with me, right? And we have the right resources to fund the expedition. Yeah. We're going to defeat the dragon, right? I, I literally have an ex-boss who told me, like, I, I remember this conversation. I was really stressed out about, like, oh, hitting certain targets and, and this and that. And he told me, he was like, we did, like, a video game. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I felt so much better after that. Right, Because right. like, I started thinking, like, a video game of, like, this is the outcome that you want. This yes. is the resources that you have. Yes. You have some gaps, but you need, you can do this to get more resources than you can get there. And, and yes. it's really like a game. Yeah. 100%. And so what I want to tell anybody at home, if you like video games, right, you're actually very, very cut out for yeah, real world. Absolutely. You are absolutely set out because you know well, you know what skill you have you know how to set goals right because you know how to say hey that's the dragon i want to fight i'm going to get there somehow i got to get to level 30 right i got to get this sword i got to get the shield i got to get the skill i got to get this team and i'm going to go defeat that dragon if you know how to do that you are absolutely ready for the real world only reason why you don't feel equipped right now is because the real world doesn't show itself as that way mm. so what we do with the game of your life template is that we essentially turn your life into a game we show you how life can be broken down into real world quests right that you can do we show you how you can earn experience points and gold into your skills into your you know inventory as you do the things that are you're meant to do, right, as you're progressing on this journey. And then we make it so easy for you to be able to go ahead and actually count your wins and celebrate, right, so that you know that what you did is truly, you know, the thing that's going to drive you. Check it out. It's for free. Uh, You can go ahead and check it out in the description below. And uh, thank you again. And back to the episode. (laughs) So I'm curious, like, in this kind of state, right, uh, I like to call it the save state, right? Yeah. We can save our game at any point in time yeah. and every time we save a game we see like the progress bar kind of move forward yeah, right yeah. maybe with like a certain completion percentage through the game yeah what is your completion percentage and what what would you say the safe state is if you could describe it for me in life or, or in business up to you would you like to talk about life or business i mean in life and if you talk about the average lifespan <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I, yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um but in yeah, like in life and business, both I am not trying to pretend to be humble, but I really think there's so much that you don't know and, and like I don't know. And, and year on year, I just realized more and more things like, huh, I wish I knew this last year. Mm, That's mm. really how I feel a lot of the yeah. time. It's like, you know, for, for, for the business, I wish I knew about this thing that I could have implemented last year. Mm-hmm. Like we were just talking about luck and productivity productivity software yeah. i'm learning a lot from you about uh i wish th- this were things i put into place um mm-hmm. a year ago i would have um you know saved a lot of pain for my team i mm. think yeah mm. yeah so th- like i can't give you a percentage because y- if you don't know the end number the <laughs> the denominator it's hard yeah. to say that right like of course um, it's almost infinity, right? Almost, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I'm hearing a lot of things. Like, it's a learning process, right? Yeah. Every time you are thinking about it, it's like, ah, oh, I should have learned this last year, you know, yeah. and there's a bit yeah. of that. Um, so let's not talk about percentages then because I, I do want to come up with, like, some sort of, like, uh, stage. Um, yeah. And I'm curious, like, is there a stage for you? Like, you know, because some people, I don't know, like, if you think about, like, Super Mario, right? Yeah. There's, like, you know, uh, uh, the grassy plains where they start, and yeah. then there's like a desert stage, and then there's like you know a yeah. uh, you know a fire stage. There's different ways to see the kind of battles you're fighting currently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What would you say yours are right now? I guess we are at the building stage. Okay, like we really are. You know, um, another video that came to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> We're really staying in this. I stage. love it. Let's yeah. do it. Yeah. So other than like. RPG games where you're role playing like dungeons, like right. This is for strategy games, right? right? Where you're like building a nation or building an economy. Mm-hmm. Um, then there's many different ways to to win the game, like civilizations. I yeah, like Civ that. I think is a great it's example. A great example, right? Mm-hmm. And, um, everything is like turn based, but also everything is connected to each other. Like to get mm-hmm. this resource, you actually need this. Yeah. type of worker but this type of worker you need a type of facility yeah. and to build a facility you need more resources right yeah and there's always trade-offs like mm-hmm. you can't do um everything all at once right and and you just have to play to the strengths of the um, the the nation that you choose or something yeah and 
like I really do think that we are at a stage where we need to get in more resources and focus on building. Mm. Uh, and it's interesting because we also have a bunch of opportunities to explore different things right now. Mm-hmm. So it's getting really hard to tell what's a distraction and what's not. Right. And how do you stay focused yeah. on doing that thing that, that is um, you know, aligned with your, your uh, team's strengths as well? Yeah. It's really not easy to tell sometimes, right? It, it, it could be either. It really mm-hmm. could, right? Mm-hmm. And I think we're not in the end game stage by far. We are in mm-hmm. the building. We, we roughly figure it out. If we were in the, you know, life cycle of a human, you know, life cycle as a company, mm-hmm. I think we're at like a teenager stage. Okay. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So if we use the analogy to its fullest, like, you know, just figuring out life, just getting a glimpse of like, yeah, you know, yeah. what Dealing life is out there. <laughs> <laughs> Dealing with changes. Yeah. And, and a lot of the change can be uncomfortable, but I think sure. it's for the better. In, in a few years, we see that these changes mm-hmm. are for better. Like going on productivity, uh, software and systems, it's sometimes uncomfortable, right? You know how it is, right? You have yeah. to go through this whole painful process of like teaching everyone how to use it, why it's important to use it. Yeah. But hopefully it's like, one of those uncomfortable changes that becomes like when you look back in a few years, it's like, oh, that's actually necessary and, and helpful. Yeah. And I really appreciate you sharing this because I think you have a lot of foresight right now in that, hey, yes, you are in the building phase because, you know, a lot of people, they talk to me about, you know, all sorts of different things about, you know, hey, I'm trying to build a business. I'm trying to start this. I'm trying to do that. And there's a lot of, all sorts of different things out there. But something I notice a lot is that there's always only one answer seemingly that people get to. Mm-hmm. I'm going to start a business. I'm going to have to do this whole checklist of things. One, yeah. two, three, four, five. Yeah. And the answer is not really, right? And also it depends on what stage your business is in, right. right? And I think something we've talked about before is that I think you're in a very unique stage and I'm really proud of you for getting here, which Thanks, is, man. you know, you've, you've built something, right? You have a very good base, right? You have the fame and, you know, traction. That's giving you opportunities. Yeah. But like you said, you don't know which ones are distractions, yeah. which will distract you from the main business you're trying to build and the vision right. that you have. Yeah. And also, you know, there's the previous, I guess, you know, perspective where, hey, when you're starving, everything is food, yeah, right? Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> when you're in that phase, you're, like, you're constantly just doing things. And now the time has come to really sit down, right? Use the foundation that you've built and build more scaffolding on top of it, right? right? Yeah. And that all comes down to like, you know, better segmentation of, where your vision is, uh, yeah. better management of the people, yeah. better management of the projects you're going to do, like clear structures and rigorous, you know, SOPs on yeah, like, you know, yeah, what yeah. you should do next in what situation. Yeah. And I think that's what's really exciting because, you know, um, that building part obviously is something very different from their previous journey. Yeah. But as someone who builds businesses, I think, you know, seeing how everyone can organize around that yeah. and you in your head, knowing that everything's going to be all right once we get this done. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's like a very, very interesting place to be. Yeah, It is a very interesting place to be. Um, you know, and earlier you're saying like, um, there's no checklist, right, of like where you're at. And um, because it's often very situational as well. Mm-hmm. I think another thing I learned over the last few years is also that don't fight the macros. Mm-hmm. When the macros are happening, like you... Literally, there's nothing. You, you're like a speck in an ocean, right? Mm-hmm. And that, that no matter how hard you fight, you're not going to win the tsunami. For example, okay. COVID. Mm. Like, no one can predict it. Yeah. And no one knew, like, uh, how long it was going to last, right? Not at all. The, the term that I was hearing all the time back then was, this is the new normal. Like, everyone's <laughs> right. going to be, yeah. be uh, wearing masks from now on. No one's going to be shaking hands from 2020 to the end of time. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Right, and, and people can be very reactive, uh, but at the end of the day, human behavior tends to, you know, revert back to, to what is natural for, for, for us. That is close. Cool, so that is cool. Right? Yeah. And, um, but you see, like, in the last year or two and how the changing macro um, environment for interest rates and, and all these things, it's mm-hmm. affecting a lot of companies as well. Yes. Right. And those are the things that like uh, you have to be mindful of, like mm-hmm. saying that it's not going to affect me and, and it's going to be over soon. And that's, yeah, naive. And, and I had to learn it my own way as well. I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah. And 
yeah, a lot of learnings come with a lot of pain. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and so I guess like what is the main challenge right now you see in this building process, right? And we let's continue the analogy. I, I love the game analogy yeah. as I, you know, Civ, right? You need a build, you need resources, yeah. right? Either it's resources in the form of, I think, time, yeah. right? Or resources in terms of money, resources in terms of people, right? Yeah. What is the resource that we're working with and how does building actually happen? Correct. Yeah. So actually, I, I say this a lot. It's one of the things that I, I repeat so much at work that I think that uh, people probably get sick of hearing me talk about it. I, <laughs> really? I do think that like in life to achieve anything, it's down to like three main factors, right? And, and uh, you can't run away from it. If you have like uh, more of one, you can do with less of the others. But mm-hmm. um, you always have to make up for it in some way or another. It's down to time, mm-hmm. uh, money. Mm-hmm. And people, right, 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 and people. I think can be uh, further broken down into two things, right? Two factors. Uh, it's the the knowledge to do something mm. and the drive to actually do something. Okay, I like right. That. So time, you definitely need time. Like no one can, you can't cook a chicken in like two seconds, right? Like, <laughs> like there's no technology that can do it yet. I think, uh, yeah. or can raise a chicken to like. Maturity. That's yeah, it. yeah, yeah. In two minutes, you can't do that. It's impossible. Some things you need time, mm. right? And some things are fixed, and as to how much time you need. But yeah. there's a lot of things uh, in business, in 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 other aspects of life, where if you have money, you can actually do a lot of things faster, right? Right. If you only have like two dollars to take a bus somewhere, it's going to take you a while. But if you have like twenty bucks to take a grab, right, uh, you can get there a lot faster. Right. Mm-hmm. It's the same when we do construction as well. Like when we're building sets, like um if you really have to do a rush job, you can core it you can you can add free stuff in and, and you pay more and you get it faster. It's possible. Right, right. Um uh, but if, if you waste a lot of time and at the end of it you don't have enough, you have no choice but you have to <laughs> yeah. pay more. Yes. Right. And and so time is the thing, but money is the other thing. Like uh, you if you have a bigger budget you can do it. But of course, like some people who spend it wiser, they can get more bang for buck. Right, mm. which goes to the third thing, which is like people. Right, if you have people with the knowledge, mm-hmm. um, then they can maybe do things with less time and less money. I see. So they're more skilled. They have more skills. Mm-hmm. Right, and but if you like people with skills, you can either take time to become <laughs> that someone who's more skilled. Okay, or you can hire someone who has that skill to help you as well. Right, right. But the other factor that's really important is also people with the drive to do it. Mm. I actually think that. There's a lot of people with knowledge to to you know and the skills to do things, but they don't have that drive either because mm-hmm. they just want a different kind of life or they're a different stage of life where that's not the things that they're driven for anymore. Yeah, the incentives that made them move before yeah. don't make them move the same way. Yeah, yeah. And how do you deal with that right now? Uh, for myself or for the people you work with, right? Yeah. How do you? navigate this landscape i think it's one of those things there's no right or wrong answer i can only like answer for myself where Mm -hmm. like the things i'm still driven for i try to share with the people around me why these things matter and Mm -hmm. why i work so hard on it yeah um then for everyone else it's like um different people have different answers for what they want out of it right and Mm -hmm. and that's their own prerogative like like we said earlier Someone's main quest can be someone's side quest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> someone's yuck is someone's yum. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So so um I can just focus on on my own mission and then what I'm driven towards. Yeah. Yeah. No, thanks so much for sharing that. And I think this is probably something that can resonate with quite a lot of business owners because, you know, many people build this team, right? They work with them for many years and then yeah. they realize that what drove the business and what helped their employees right and teams stay productive it's not the same anymore right and you get new people that come in and they also are driven by different things and the thing is as your company scales you get different quality of people right Right. you get people that are more skilled perhaps you'll get people that are maybe less skilled but more um, passionate about the work that you're doing yeah because just by the nature of being more successful you have attracted more people to come into the door so like um i mean like I think we talk a lot about video games, so moving past that a bit, but <laughs> like uh, still in the, around the same place. Um, like you look at history, right? A lot of it's the same. Like Alexander the Great, mm-hmm. like uh, when he did his own conquest throughout his known world of time. Mm-hmm. I think there were different people that joined along the way as well. Yeah, yeah, right. And and that helped 
continue with the, the rest of the conquest and his own journey, right? Mm-hmm. But getting to the end of it, like, um, that's this thing about how many people in his army didn't want to go on to, to the next part of the conquest. They right, to right. Back. Yeah. And, and that's literally what we're talking about because by that time, the motivations and the drive has changed. Yes. Right? It's like, no, we actually want to get back home mm-hmm. and, and get to enjoy some of the winnings that we did over this few years of like like expansion, yeah. right? Or maybe their main reason of going has been satisfied, exactly. right? Because they've gotten that money. Yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> they've gotten all the plunder and all that. Mm-hmm. So they want to go back. So motivations have changed. And, mm-hmm. and uh, this is what I mean by the fundamentals of like human nature doesn't change that much. It's literally thousands of years ago, but yeah. people still operate in the same way, right? 100%. Yeah. And so actually, like, I have something for this where, you know, if anyone who's kind of dealing with the situation uh, in their companies, one thing that I find very valuable is identifying where actually your teammates are mm. in their, let's call it, perspective in life, right? Yeah. And the way I kind of define it is you'll have people that are very still focused on the transaction, right? Yeah. How can I get the most reward for the most little time spent, Correct. right? 100%. There's going to be a lot of people like that in your business. That's okay. Yeah. And so we can make use of that, right? If people are going to be motivated by some sort of reward, yeah. give them the reward, yeah. right? But you always get a return you know, for that. Yeah. For the people that, uh, there's another set of people who are going to be very, very passionate about what you do. Yeah. They're going to love the business. They're going yeah. to love what you stand for. And what you can do is you can motivate them with speeches. Every time you do a speech, you're, they're going to be motivated, of yeah. course, right? Because yeah. you're talking about how much more amazing good you're going to do for the things that they care about. Yeah. The risk though, to work with them is that, you know, most likely they're not, you know, if they feel like the direction of the yeah. company has changed, yeah. oh, you're in for a tough time, yeah, right? Yeah, so you got to always make sure you're rebalancing expectations Correct. and communicating often about what the company is doing, yeah. why it's making that decision, yeah. and how it's on the same page. Yeah. And like you said too, like it depends on where you are at, at that point in your journey, like uh, as a company, right? Like, yeah, at the start, it's like, uh, we're going we're gonna to climb Mount Everest. It's going to be tough and everyone's on board. But like, you know, once you reach a certain stage of the company of growth and, and you're like, oh, we need systems and all that, it does change for uh, these people that, that were very mission-driven at the start, I think. 100%, yeah. Right, then um, it becomes part of a process where you really have to, to manage that and say, like, this is how we're evolving and mm-hmm. this is, like, the next mission or this is the next peak we're going to climb for. Yeah. Um. And or if there's no such next peak, just be really honest about it and say like, this is where we are at, and this is probably the next few years, and and you know, companies change, and if you change, like how you work out the best. Yeah. For everyone. Yeah. I think you actually mentioned something really important here, which is there are two demographics to look at right now. Actually, mm. there is the people demographic, which is the team, right? Yeah. As I talked about, and yeah. they go through different stages. But then also the company goes through different stages, right? Yeah. You think about it, actually, when you first start a company, it's not even a company. It's just like, it's hey, I, I'm, just I'm this guy selling something, right? And this yeah, guy's trying yeah, to buy something. Yeah. There's this transaction that goes on. Yeah. Eventually, we become like super passionate. We're like a family, you know, we're tight knit. We're yeah. you know, a collective. We're moving yeah, things, yeah. right? You go. But eventually, like you said, it moves to systems, right? Yeah. Hey, shit, we're actually doing something now. Yeah. We're getting recognized, yeah. you know? Yeah. We, we need to like you know incorporate <laughs> <laughs> or like you know some yeah. form of like legitimization need you need an address <laughs> yeah. right like oh i need an office you know yeah, yeah. oh shit we need to wear shirts now like <laughs> there's so many things that are it's so funny because it's so predictable like he said history repeats itself right Correct. this is the cycle that goes yeah and i think a thing that a lot of people don't recognize is that it's totally okay for people to fall in and out of that yeah some people work really well within one perspective, right? Yeah. Within one stage. Yeah. And that's okay. Like you have people that are like zero entrepreneurs, right? They keep starting new things. They don't okay. want to scale with it to like infinity. They just yeah. want to start the thing and then start another thing. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Um, so in the same vein, like I think every team member should be afforded that opportunity. Um, because in the organization that they're in, if the organization outscales them, yeah. it's gonna be very difficult for them to actually catch up and, you know, feel at home to what they enjoy before and guess yeah. what that culture is then gonna not to say poison but it's gonna poison the well right yeah. it's going to make the whole culture seem off because you have people that are operating at different perspectives yeah and again it's up to you how you want to manage organization where like hey do you create space or like hey this division is going to be very very mission driven yeah. this division is like purely consulting based right they, yeah they get like a you know consultant hours and everything and they right. come in and go as they want Correct. and then you have this place where like hey you guys just gotta really follow the system right yeah. this is the 
this is a factory in which we're printing out everything and this is how you can follow it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so other than like video games, the other thing I'm really into is like history, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and, well, it's kind of connected because there's a lot of history-based video games. Sure, well. yeah. <laughs> Civ as one, right? Civ is one, right? And um, if you look at the history of a lot of like uh, dynasties and all that, like it's always a red tag group of people starting mm-hmm. it. Like the the founder of the Han Dynasty, like we're, we're ethnic Hans, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Right? yeah. And so, mm-hmm. um, like, um, and he and his band of people weren't the most educated, like, right? And it's usually a bunch of people that's like, huh, like things are not right. We're gonna make some change. Yeah. And and he wasn't like the most educated, and they weren't they weren't from like imperial families or anything, mm-hmm. right? And it's not just them. Like, there's a bunch of others that, like, you see throughout history. They band together and start doing something. More and more people hear the message they, they gather, right? But at the start, like, what they all need is a base. If yes. you don't have a base, yeah. you can't grow. Yes. Right? Which is why I say, like, for our company, it's, like, the teenage part. Like, we, we are starting to have a base. I, I don't even feel confident enough to say that we have a base, mm-hmm. right? And And you need to build around that. But once you start building a base and, and people start taking you seriously, right? They start ha- recruiting and drafting in soldiers. Mm-hmm. When you're starting to, when you're like 50 people, you're like, okay, like, like let's just figure out what, what we can eat. When we go into hundreds and, and, and then the thousands of like soldiers, you need drills, you need, you need like organization. They need a place okay. to stay. Mm-hmm. You need to ration the food when yeah. you're marching and all that. So the next group of people that come in are actually people who built systems as well. Yes. Right. And we're talking about like this story is literally the founding dynasty of the, the Han dynasty. Yeah. Right? It's so long ago. But yes. It's the same thing. Like the people it's who came thing. in. Yeah. And maybe I'm guessing like some people at the start will probably be dejected. And it's like, why, why do we have this ruse and, 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 and uh, we have to ration food? Like, like yeah how does it happen to plunder and you know, live and let live? <laughs> you know, going, that yeah, was how yeah. they started actually. Yeah, exactly, right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, be it like Chinese history or, or European history, like there's always a lot of these cases where people start out that way and and then the story evolves and, and the people evolve and, and the start and the end might not be always the same people, but that's their own hero's journey as well. 100%. And I think the most important thing is to be empathetic for mm-hmm. that journey. And I think that's what, again, I see in you a lot. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's so interesting when you start bringing people together because it's never yeah. easy. People are so diverse, right? Yeah. Even people within the same country, the same culture can have so many different ways of seeing the world. Yeah. And now on top of that, different motivations, different incentives. Like yeah. it's not easy to keep everyone running happily <laughs> at Correct. the same direction, yeah. right? It's tough. As you grow, it gets tougher and tougher. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So my thing that I've been saying recently is like, I'd rather let you down today than let you down like four months later. Wow. <laughs> That's powerful. Yeah. So um it's not just for your employees it's also with your business partners right like mm-hmm. um and so many different stakeholders when you run a company yeah right there's yeah. really so many of them yeah that uh sometimes it's hard to keep track and 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 you know do the right thing mm-hmm. all the time it's it's something we i guess we, we aspire to do all the time but sure i'm sure that like uh i mean i've fallen short like on many moments i'm, I'm sure likewise you had your moments yeah. too right and you just try to do what's honorable and, and have your own code of conduct that you believe in. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's not always easy. Yes. Right? And, and, and like nowadays, the thing that I'm really trying to practice is like, like with business partners, if like it's not a collaboration that we can make because we have, earlier we talked about the different opportunities. You have been, we have to be mindful about what we mm-hmm. choose to do. Yeah. It means like you're letting down a bunch of other people where sure. you could do something too, right? But yeah. The thing is like, yeah, I'd rather let you down today and have this uncomfortable thing today yeah. than six months down the road, a year down the road, and like, hey, you've been leading me on. That's way yeah. worse. Yeah. Learning how to say no, right? To it's opportunities tough. Yeah. and stuff. Setting the boundary, right? And I think that's where I think it's so interesting. It's like, you know, as the leader of your organization, you really need to set the tone for this where yeah. I think, you know, everywhere, every, again, you know, you guys started off as like, hey, any opportunity is a good opportunity. Meets yeah. is meets, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But now you have the op- option to choose. Again, yeah. a very privileged position, but definitely something that you guys earned, yeah. right? And now 
how do you guys choose properly? Yeah. And that direction comes from the top. Yeah. And I think that's where I think a lot of entrepreneurs can resonate as well is that it's not easy to learn these skills, to like really set boundaries for a first time, to say no to opportunities that you would have said yes to it a year ago. Correct. Right. Yeah. Um, and, you know, you shoot yourself, you know, what if it doesn't come back? Right. Like yeah. there's a lot of those things where, you know, uncertainty will settle in. 100%. But like you said, you know, be very clear on where you want to go. Yeah. Your vision will drive you to the right place. And right. Obviously, if you have done your business for quite a bit and you kind of know the metrics of which your business runs on, right? Yeah. I think if you ask any seasoned entrepreneur who has run their business for two, three years, you can probably tell you like, you know, this is what makes us successful, right? Yeah. This is yeah. our, you know, our lifeblood. Yeah. And if what you're doing is going to be, you know, different than lifeblood or it's not even pivoting in the same direction, right? <laughs> or pivoting in the, in the way that makes sense based on yeah. your knowledge, then, yeah. you know, what are you doing? No, um, so maybe digressing from what you're saying, I'm not sure if it's on the same point, but like you chose to use the word lifeblood, right? Mm -hmm. And I remember uh, ex boss and slash mentor, she told me like uh, your cash flow is literally like yeah. lifeblood. If the company is a body, mm -hmm. um, right? And you need all these things for it to function and be alive. Mm -hmm. But the blood, uh, the cash is like the blood. If yeah. it stops flowing, mm -hmm. you're dead. It doesn't matter like how profitable you are. Yeah. You need the cash coming in and then yeah it's very true right and and but it also goes back to my point about the macro like i do think that this is my own take right um it's that like i think a lot of companies have been struggling in the recent year yeah it's been tough yeah because globally cash has been contracting mm -hmm. right like so when it contracts everyone's gonna have a tough time i think yeah yeah I mean, so then there goes like, you know, what's main quest, what's side quest, right? When do I take a side quest that pays me a bit yeah, more yeah. so that I can do the main quest? Yeah. And I don't know, like, I, I think for me, when I think about that, there's like a really interesting model that I might use, which is, um, and I think you've asked me about this before, that prioritization matrix, right? Yes. You know, what is, you know, something that's a first priority? How do you choose what's first priority versus second priority versus third priority? And more importantly, actually, how do you get your teammates to, you know, jump in on the right things to do yeah. so that you can move forward at the same pace. Yeah. And so for me, like, I usually think about it like this, where, you know, you have all these, um, again, like, let's say even for our organization at the foundation, we have like 20 different projects we could be doing, yeah. right? There's so many ways to help people, right? Yeah. What is helping people? Like yeah. <laughs> living a better life, infinite ways. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. I recently told someone that, you know, oh yeah, I run a foundation that helps people live better lives. And he's like, oh, really? So uh, you help me like, you know, become a movie star. <laughs> and I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's funny, right? Because the definition of that can be so wide. And so, right? yeah, it's so broad. Yeah. Right? And it so, means a lot to a lot of different people. Correct. Yeah. So in this case, the vision is broad. So technically I could do that. Yeah. And that would still be within my, my vision statement, so yeah. to speak. But then it becomes a decision matrix of like, okay, is that the thing that will help us really manifest yeah. our purpose in the world, yeah. right? Helping someone become a movie star or is there something else we could be doing, yeah. right? And so for me, like it's, it becomes very simple actually is you say the who, right? And so we're going full circle. The who yeah. is important, right? Yeah. Who are we really trying to help, yeah. right? And, you know, we have three uh, personas that we try to target. One is, you know, creatives, right? Uh, people like you and me who yeah. are trying to create something in the world. Uh, students, people who are just trying to figure out life and, you know, uh, learn as much as they can. And also retirees, right? Because people have, you know, lived a full life and they want to do something more and they want to help more people. And there's that uh, demographic as well. So I look into them and I say, hey, you know, what are the things that are currently bothering you today, right? And we have a community, right? That's, yeah. I think that's the beauty of having a community is that you can actually go and ask them like, hey, what do you need, right? What's yeah. on your mind? Yeah. And the thing is, as, you know, communities go, is that most people will also always end up mentioning something similar, Yeah. right? Yeah. So it was just like, you know, Three months ago, we were talking about like, hey, you know, what's really, you know, letting us down right now? It's like, oh, yeah, you know, Conrad, we feel like we don't really have, you know, um, sometimes when we're talking about our problems to our loved ones, you know, we're trying to share, you know, things that are on our mind, you know, you know, just really, you know, we don't feel heard sometimes, yeah. right? And people don't really know the best way to like respond to us. We're looking for a very specific answer, a very specific syntax, even yeah. sometimes yeah. when you want your partner that. to respond to yeah, you, yeah, right? You're yeah. like, yeah, I just want you to say these words in exact this way and I'll feel better. <laughs> this, sequence. <laughs> this exact sequence, right? Yeah, I get it. We all get that, right? Yeah, yeah. And actually, um, you know, and I started hearing so much of these and I was like, huh, let's, this is interesting. And I feel it too. So yeah. let's investigate this more. And after investigation, what we realized was, it's simply a mismatch, right? When you're talking to someone about uh, their level of, you know, awareness of the 
situation that they're in. Yeah. Right? Are they avoiding the situation? Are yeah. they uh, aware of their feelings? Are they accepting of the situation that they found themselves in their feelings? Yeah. And are they taking action? Right. Yeah. And depending on which stage of the four A's we call it for yeah. for a model of understanding, the answers that they're looking for are very very different, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and it's like in the trope of like you know someone coming home and. You know, they complain to their partner like, oh, you know, so-and-so was so mean yeah. to me at work. And then yeah. the other person's jumping in trying to solve their problem. They're like, I don't want that. Yeah. Just listen to me. So then what came out of that, right, just to finish the story, is that we ended up building an AI bot mm -hmm. that helped uh, people really break down this process, right? One, as a form of help for them, right? If they have no one else to talk to in that moment, yeah. no one from the community to chat with them, at least they can talk to this AI bot, which has no baggage, I right? I want to see Yeah, that. has yeah. no baggage. It's called Talk It Outs. It's on the ChatGPT store right, um, has no baggage, right? It's just able to listen empathetically mm -hmm. and give you like really good responses, the kind of responses that you need in that moment to yeah. make you feel heard and understood. And on top of that, since it's AI enabled, it can also give you, give you, give you real insights on action when you're ready for action. And yeah, that, that's amazing, right? It is. Yeah. This is where I'm going to try to take your podcast for a bit. Like, what's your take on that whole thing on like AI versus human and, and like in, in this solution that you have, which is, providing empathy right mm -hmm. providing a listening ear like um uh, there's probably another take where people are against that whole thing like no you still need a human being to go through that like what's your take on, on, on this yeah i think that's a really good question yeah. and i don't think it's a substitute i make it very clear actually on yeah. you know uh when we posted it and shared it with people is that it's not a substitute for human engagement yeah right but the thing is humans are fallible right i might share with you you know, a uh, really, you know, troubling thing that I'm going through right now. But because you might be in your own headspace about your own problems, right. you might not be in the right space to listen to me, yeah. which is okay, right? Yeah. I should understand that as a friend, right? But maybe in the moments of my own weakness, when I'm feeling hurt and not hurt, then I need someone, right? Yeah. Even if it's not you or my partner or anyone else. So therefore, in that moment, having something that you can fall back on, right? Yeah. An assistant, right? That's all it is, an assistant can be really helpful, right? It and yeah. it's just helping you process. To me, it's the same as like if you were just simply, you know, going and journaling it down, yeah. right? And it's just that additionally, the journal will also give you some responses to help you feel better. Yeah. But the act of just journaling it, writing it down, whether you use like, you know, the text to uh, speech to text yeah. option or you're typing it out yeah. is already cathartic because yeah. you're letting it out. And then knowing someone is actually on the other side or someone, right, is on the other yeah. side listening um, and then giving empathetic responses. I think that's super important. So, it, it, good answer, by the way. Um, but, like, uh, what I was thinking is about is, like, um, somewhere I was reading about how this is hotlines that people can call when you need help. Mm. But sometimes the, the call waiting time is so long and ridiculous. That, right. Like, yeah, how many people fall through the crack, right? 100%. Yeah. Yeah. So, this could be, like, a really good, like, a interim, like, uh, while you're waiting for it. Like, um, mm -hmm. it's actually cathartic to, to write about it yes. already, right? And another thing I've been thinking about is what I noticed is that, like, um, in in the younger generation, I mean, we're we're young too, but like uh, like younger, yes. younger, <laughs> right? Like how texting is is a lot more the default uh, form of communication, and not having yes. a voice call. Yes, right, it's actually stressful for a lot of people to have a voice call nowadays. Uh, yeah. me, me too, sometimes, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, like uh, like all these different formats of communications, like um, actually matters, right? Mm -hmm. And you doing something where it's typing out rather than voicing out it's yeah. actually interesting as well yeah so i can answer that too like and because we have data now from yeah. our users right which is you know i was very curious i had a hypothesis going in which was you know a lot of people don't like going to therapy for example yeah because it's very like you feel like you have to expose yourself to a random right. stranger yeah. right and you don't know how they'll judge you the whole thing about therapy is that you don't want to be judged but yeah. again the irony is that you I won't be judged i asked you this question the, the last time we hung out in a sauna which is like how do you even go about picking one like for me that mm -hmm. becomes such a big Hooder that it's hard for me to clear that and actually go for therapy. 100%, yeah. right? And I think that's absolutely normal. Yeah. And, you know, we all go through that. And, you know, what I found is that, you know, using this as the interim step, like the AI assistant, I'll talk it out, is you get a chance to really feel like what a safe space is. Yeah. Because I think like, you know, at least for me, I only speak on my behalf. Like I never really felt like I had a safe space growing up mm. to really share my feelings. Yeah. And maybe it's even as like a man as well. I don't know. Like it wasn't really very encouraged for yeah, me to be like, yeah. hey, tell my, talk my feelings out, share it out, talk to people about my, about my problems. Yeah, I think even more so in the Asian context where yes. we're always told to like, you know, just deal with it. Just deal with it, yeah. right? And 
I think that then plays into the difficulty of actually going towards someone and saying, hey, I want to talk to you about my problems. Let's listen, right? Yeah. And so what we found uh, through the usage of our platform is that, hey, you know, the people that go through with us get the ability to learn that, hey, I, might, I wasn't ready for therapy before, yeah. right? But now that I know what a safe place can be created because of just some questions, yeah. then I feel like I can actually go and approach therapy now. Yeah. And one more thing there too is that a lot of people, their objections to therapy is, oh, they don't know my problem. Yeah. How can this guy who's never, you know, let's say you use us as an example, he's, they've never run a business, you know, they've mm. never done the things I've done. Yeah. How can they truly understand me and listen to me and tell me things that I would, you know, get? Yeah. But that's the thing people don't understand is that a therapist is not a coach, yeah. right? A coach is different. A coach should 100% have been in your industry, yeah. knows the things you have done yeah. and give you like actionable insights. But what a therapist is doing is just listening and making you feel heard. And sometimes yeah. that's enough because you know the answers. You have everything in your mind. Right. You just need to unlock the emotional, um, so to speak, blocker yeah. and be able to move forward. And again, the great thing is like, you know, again, I'm not saying it's a substitute for therapy, but yeah. even just talking you through with the AI bot, has helped so many people already move forward in yeah. the things that they have to do. Yeah. Right. And again, it's anonymous, right? It's a chatbot. I I don't see your answers. No one sees your answers. Yeah. Maybe better than open AI. But like, <laughs> you know, the, the the degree I think of separation when you can also just type a response to it, uh, already makes it such a more accessible option than like scheduling in a one hour call with a therapist. That's the right word to use as well. Like um the other thing about these things is um you like I mean I think a lot about this and the products that we make now or mm-hmm. experiences that we create now to how do you make it accessible right like when price mm-hmm. points are too high yeah it's tough to do good to the world when it's so expensive that people feel mm. like it's not accessible like it's not like i i'm not gonna get it they don't even bother trying yeah yeah no i mean like that's why i'm, I'm all for like uh giving people as many free things as possible right yeah. Um, my whole thing is like 80% of whatever I build will always be free, yeah. right? 20% are going to be paid at a reasonable rate to just yeah. pay the bills, right? Yeah. But the goal is that, hey, there are so many people that need help. There's so much knowledge locked up somewhere, right? Mm. And not only knowledge, but like the ways to actually do something is locked yeah. up in the minds of people and whether by accident or on purpose, like I'm not even going to make that uh, statement. Yeah. But the thing is that these things should be shared with the world. The know-how, right? The tools, right? Uh, the community to bring you together. Everything should be something that people can access. And yeah, it's always a work in progress as well because, you know, as you know, sometimes free things people don't value, right? Correct. So what we like to do is to make it so that there is some sort of give you have to do, right? Join yeah. the community, right? Be part yeah. of our culture, yeah. right? Um, help someone else's community. Then everything's yours, right? So yeah. there's so many ways that I think you can incentivize and support people to feel like they've given something of value as well. And then they can get, you know, their uh, value. That's very true. People really don't don't value the the stuff they get for free. It's just yeah. human nature. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Yeah, but again, I think like the the beauty of it is, you know, um, oh, beauty and not beauty. Like, is that uh, as more and more things happen in the world, as more things are, you know, in some ways getting worse. Right, economies mm-hmm. kind of getting worse. There's wars going on. Like, I think the mindset of people have shifted quite a bit. Mm-hmm. Where it's like, okay, how do I a you know, improve myself because the world order is changing. I need yeah. to figure out how to better my life, live a better life in some way. Mm. And the other thing is like, you know, do I pay like a million dollars, right? I mean, exaggerated, but like, yeah. you know, thousands of dollars for a solution that yeah. may or may not help me. Or do I try something that, you know, is free, right? Mm. Realize it helps me quite a damn bit, yeah. right? And yeah. then just support this foundation more that is going, helping us you know, give us so many amazing things. Yeah. So that's the hope I have. That's how I'm betting how we're going to reach a billion people. Yeah. Yeah. A billion. A billion. And that's a big goal. It's a big goal. Yeah. yeah. In 10 years. 10 years. <laughs> no, you get there. You get yeah, there. well, I'll get there. Hopefully, yes. But um, it's yeah. really with the help of so many amazing people uh, in the community, like even just meeting friends like yourself, like, yeah. you know, having conversations like this, like that really unlocks so much more of what's going on in our minds yeah. and hopefully can even help other people, you know, succeed where they want to succeed no like you know i wouldn't doubt it if you if you if you make it happen right like again someone's main quest is a side quest and once you're done with this what seems like a main quest now maybe at some point you realize that this is just a side quest the whole time and that's uh-huh. the next thing and you're going gonna go for two billion <laughs> yes yes to the moon yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah no i love it well 
Um, I do want to ask, like, is there anything you'd like to share to the audience um, that, you know, might be listening that might resonate with you? Maybe it's always just a few years behind uh, you, like where in your shoes, uh, where you were a few years ago. Mm. I think it's going to be okay. Like, mm. uh, I think uh, it's, some, it's, it's something I wish people told me more and, and I still wish that people would tell me it today. You can tell me it later on it's gonna be okay (laughs) (laughs) it really is gonna be okay you know like um there were many a times where you think like oh we're not gonna make it through this year you know but it's gonna be okay just just believe in and you know do the right thing do the smart thing or try your best in in doing the smart and right things and and um there's really no way of like knowing where you'll be in a year or two i I don't know where i'm gonna be in a year or two Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, roughly, I know, like we're gonna be doing the same stuff, and 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 hopefully in a better way. But uh, that's it, right? But there's a lot of this opportunities, like a lot of the projects that that we did last year. You've been to, Vivian's been to, like it, it didn't happen until like the very last moment. Like I had no idea, like maybe a year or two ago, that we were gonna do all these things, right? And now that we've done it, you're just looking for it. But I have no idea what we're gonna do in a year or two. Right. right. I just have to believe that it's going to be okay. And yeah, there's going to be days where you think like, uh, I know it's going to be okay, but there's a lot of days where you have a lot of uh, self-doubt. Mm-hmm. And, and um, I was it Woody Allen, I think the, the uh, filmmaker. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He said something about how his rule is to just show up. Like in, yes. in just showing up, you're really like better than like 50% of the people or something, something along those lines. Yeah, right? yeah. So he's a typewriter, like a really old typewriter. Like every day he just has to go in and type something. Yes. It doesn't matter what, right? Just go and do, show up, do something. Yeah. Yes. I love it. Thank you so much, Wei Ting. No, I really appreciate your time yeah, for yeah. Uh, being here and thank you for sharing that very meaningful message. Yeah. And uh, I think to everyone at home, yeah. it's going to be okay. <laughs> Bye-bye. Yeah.